Hi, it's uh, Frank from MC Ranch again. Uh, I to give you a little update here. What's going on with the cows? Uh, had a video we produced in December on uh, early uh, bale grazing. Uh, now it's the uh, first week of February. And uh, we're uh, having our cows, we're with our cows here again. Um, we weaned the calves off the cows in January. We found that uh, with the way the bale grazing was going, it was just using a little too much feed and they were starting to lose some condition. So we brought our bale feeders out here and uh, this bale feeder was one we purchased last year we were pretty happy with. From an outfit in Hythe, they're about 1500 bucks a piece, they're real well built feeders. And uh, yeah, so these uh, cows are grazing in here on the muskeg. Max, Max, Hill. And um, yeah, they're doing pretty good on this stuff. This is how we truck our hay out here. We just got a, a fifth wheel trailer and uh, works good because we can just load up the bales and put on 14 bales at a time with the tractor and bring it out. So you only use one piece of equipment. Works pretty good. This is an old um, bale feeder that I had for about uh, 13 or 14 years now. It was manufactured in Hythe. Uh, pretty good bale feeder. Some of them are, I still got one that's in pretty good shape, this one here. But I'm thinking these newer ones are a lot better. And they're about the same price. Uh, that's pretty good, you know, 15 years later and we're still paying the same amount of money for these bale feeders. Typically we can get six bales in one of these bale feeders. We move them, stack it just right. Uh, you can stick three in the bottom and then have them flatten and stick three more on there. You can see on this other one they got there's uh, five in that one, but you can put six in each one. So the cows here, they've uh, actually went into the muskeg. I guess they're looking for snow in there, and they made a whole bunch of little trails and beds in there. So they've kind of packed that down and uh, brought a lot of manure in there, and they're almost kind of clearing that on their own there. And that's just some bales where the bale feeder was, and we moved it out from... We usually try to let the, the hay go down a bit and then uh, move the bale feeder and then they have a little bit of bedding there too, eh? So, yeah, you can see the manure is kind of spread out pretty good here. Um, there was nothing growing here last year, it was just all kind of cleared out with cat. So it'll be interesting to see uh, next year just how much grass grows in here on the muskeg. In the summertime, this is a pretty soft area here. So some of it was drained. Um, so hopefully it'll be good. There's a little calf there. What happened with him is uh, we leave the bulls out with the cows after preg testing in the winter time and the odd cow will abort and then it'll just get bred back and all of a sudden you have a calf and in the middle of winter they weren't expecting. But she's doing fine, uh, nothing wrong with her. Sometimes uh, you have a high uh, mortality rate on them type of cows because they're born unassisted out here and it can be cold and uh, they don't always make it. This is a bull we bought from Creech last year. Actually two of them. This was a two year old and this other one here is a yearling. A couple Angus bulls we got. This is our Hereford bull that we also bought off of uh, Hill 70 Quantock off of Bill Creech. And what we're trying to do is run about a third Hereford bulls here with our Angus cows. And we'd like to keep some of these uh, replacements, white face replacements, off of these, uh, off of these Herefords. It's a pretty nice looking Hereford bull. One in the back, there's actually a belted Galloway belongs to the wife. She's got a set of twins like that we got off of the cow we had. There's another one of these bale feeders we got from Riverside Welding and Height. There's the other twin. Hey Max. That's about it.